All right. So I have, a, as I shared with the audience, you know, I have an anxious attachment style. And when I look at the three most significant relationships in my life, and I'm, I'm diagnosing them on, on my behalf, if you will, I would say that they were avoidant, particularly in the area of, of avoiding being expressive from a communicative perspective. And and I'm a very expressive person. I'm the type of person at the end of the night that would say, how's our relationship going? And I was met with a lot of resistance. Why do I attract those women? Like, why is it, you know, like, why do I choose those women? Why do I attract them? Well, there's a lot there. So okay. we pair, we all pair bond by recognition and familiarity. We don't pair bond with a total stranger. We have yeah, to right. find something familiar even familial in them. Otherwise, we're too far away from home. If they're too much like home, uh, then it's a little like incest. So there's a balance between strangerness and, and familiarity, right? But so we tend to pick uh, the right person in terms of nature doesn't make that kind of mistake. What, what tends to happen is that we still don't know how to handle this person, right? Um, okay. When we meet somebody and they start to become primary, and a primary attachment figure. They become a proxy for everybody who came before. And that's why these relationships are among the hardest. It has a long, <clears throat> forgive me, a long memory. Um, uh, and so, uh, because we're back into a dependent kind of relationship. And now I remember, and now I have these needs and expectations and entitlements and so on. So you could be, <clears throat> forgive me, you could be sure. um, um, finding somebody who's not an island, not an avoidant, but because of the dynamics of a two-person system, um, you're affecting each other and you're, you're creating the, uh, the sense that this other person is an avoidant. They could very well be, right? <laughs> and the problem, I'm so That's sorry, true. my allergies. Okay. <laughs> the, the problem here is that attachment as a study uh, is based on looking at individuals or pairs uh, mother infant pairs not so well with adults which is much more phenomenological and hard to track so you become a system and the system is now a, a, a thing of itself right and we're reacting to each other constantly i pursue you and you start to distance you start to uh, pursue me i start to distance and that's normal what we are concerned about are one trick ponies people who are locked in to clinging uh, and ambivalence or people who are locked into distancing and they don't care that they do this, right? That's not- oh, wait, a wait, wait, wait. I want to, that made a big difference for me. They yeah. don't care. Can, uh, wow. That room triggered me. Can you elaborate on that piece, please? Because that's big, I think. So I'm an avoidant, let's say. I'm an avoidant. I know I'm an avoidant. It has caused me trouble. I've been down this road many times and no one's been okay. good enough. I think now it's me. And I notice what I do. Uh, and now I'm ready for a real relationship. I'm going to harness my avoidance. And if I do something that is, uh, that is uh, uh, unfair or insensitive to you, I'm going to apologize right away. Um, okay. Certain behaviors I'm going to do reflexively, right? Yeah. But, but, but I am letting you know that I want what you want and I understand myself and I'm willing to do this correctly right? As opposed to, I have no idea that I do this. I think there's something wrong with you. Um, uh, that person's not going to change. Uh, you should not take that person. Uh, they are not ready for prime time. Yeah. Um, or I know what I am and uh, I like it. Uh, take it so, Well, I'm guilty of, of I'm going to say the following. And I should know better. I do this for a living. And yet I'm still a human being that- of course. Uh, is, you know, that ha is wishful thinking to some degree where that early stage of the dating process where, as Chris Rock would say, we each show up as the ambassador of our best selves. Right. And, and, we're, on, I, and we're on drugs, endogenous drugs. Don't yeah, we? exactly. That dopamine, that oxytocin and such. Um, and yet I, I recognize that I have taken those red flags of the avoidant and I just turned them into green flags. Oh. You know, like I, I, in other words, I look past it, even though I cognitively saw this, 
you know, it's like I saw the iceberg coming to me instead of me going to it or vice versa, if you will. Um, but I still, because there's this place of hope that you're hoping this could change. And, yeah. and, and I recognize that it took making requests and bids for connection. And even though they weren't met, um, I had to come to that conclusion that this person wasn't going to meet me where I wanted to be met. And it was a tough pill to swallow, you right. know, and it took me a long time to get to that position. Um, you talk in your book and, and, and you've sp spoken quite a bit about the importance of healthy communication and making requests for what you want in relationship to make requests for your needs in a nonviolent way, of course. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that a little bit more when you're with an avoidant or an anxious attacher? Will you allow me just to address the last thing you said, though, first? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. So there's a remedy for what you're talking about in terms okay. of uh, um, people really should. And I, I wrote about this in Wired for Dating. Uh, okay. Recommend that you you make a list, not of the perfect partner, right? Okay. Don't think of a person. Think of uh, you know, person X, what is your idea of a perfect relationship? What, you know, in terms of what we do and what we don't do, okay. uh, do we put our relationship first? Uh, you might say, yes, that's what I'm looking for. We both agree to put our relationship first. Do, uh, do, uh, uh we tell each other everything. We're fully transparent with each other. I'm looking for that. That's what I want. Um, yeah, we have right. each other's backs at all times, no exceptions. We repair injuries immediately or soon uh, because we can and because that's a good idea, right? You make a list of what the perfect relationship is. Focus on the relationship, not the person. That will help you screen out people who are inappropriate. And then you trot them around to your peeps and you have them vetted, which is what we have to do because we are on drugs. Yes. And we have to trust our social network to tell us if we ask them, mm, I don't like how you look with this person. I don't, you don't seem to be yourself. I, I don't trust this person, right? Male, female, young, old. That's the way it's done. Uh, and that I think is a better way to think about what you want and what you're looking for. That person has to uh, be attracted to the same things you are. Uh, yes. and show you that they're capable of doing that. You Well, you just shared something that I espouse incessantly when I record videos and even in my own practice. I actually talk about the importance of vetting. And yes. a, a lot of people don't even know what that word means, you know, but it's, it's, it's really finding out about as much about this person as you possibly can before you give your heart to another person is to ask those tougher questions. Now, many of my contemporaries in the dating realm, if you will, would rather people to keep it casual, to keep it light, to not get too deep with someone, you know, because that will spoil attraction. I kind of have a different philosophy, and I'm going to say this a little tongue in cheek, I believe we should interrogate people. Now I say that tongue in cheek, but my point is you could give them sodium, ask, you could give them sodium amytal. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, if you could, I would. But and it's but, but the point is, and, and not everyone is going to be truthful, and certainly people, you know, lie to themselves. But the idea is to ask those tougher questions, and what that does build is when you're when you're actually having deeper conversation, you actually have a more intimate connection, potentially intimate connection with someone. And I don't mean physically, I just mean emotionally. When you ask deeper questions early on, and I'd love to know how you feel about that in the dating process. I think it's fine as long as, uh, as, as uh, the person doing this isn't seen as interrogating because okay. nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good night. Um, nobody likes that. And so there's a way of being interested in a person. Okay. Right? Um, you're showing your interest in that person and you want to know things about them. Not your, you're not, you know, uh, how much money do you make? Uh, yeah. You tend to, do you tend, are you moving upward in the world? Uh, uh, you know, where do you stand on children? Uh, these are clumsy 
uh, interrogative type of questions that are a turnoff. So, okay. so, you know, this is people skills. This is why I say dating is great practice for learning how to read faces, read voices, read the room, watch, okay. pay attention, right? Uh, uh, not necessarily judge, but notice what you are judging, notice what you are seeing. That's a smooth way of doing things. Uh, uh, and hopefully the other person's doing the same thing with you. Keep in mind though, it's, you know, the heart, uh, staying away from that is not exactly easy to do because nature, when we find each other, wants us to mate. So, <laughs> well, I encourage, I actually encourage, you know, before you actually meet someone is to have a deeper conversation on the telephone, you know, and, and, and it could be as simple as saying, oh, how was, you know, where did you grow up? How was your childhood? What were your parents like? Right. And, you know, a lot of actually people speak volume, just those three things, three things, where'd you grow up? What were what was your childhood? Like, what were your parents like can speak volumes yeah. as to a person's level of emotional maturity, particularly if they had a traumatic childhood and there was no healing done after the fact. Yeah. Um, so bringing it back to. Um, if somebody says they had a perfect uh, childhood, perfect parents. Yeah. That's usually an avoidant, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because Oh, because they're avoiding the, the pain that they experience in childhood. So uh, yeah, they strip out uh, any any kind of negative emotion. Yeah. 